Good morning. It is Sarah Michaels here. I am coming back at you today. No video. No, no video today because I am still in my pajamas <laughs> drinking coffee with no makeup on. Um, so that's fun. So you don't get to see my face quite yet. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to add and update all of the business information for your website prior to the launch. So for this little exercise here, you are going to need a couple of things handy. So first of all, you will need a logo. So whether you have just created one in Canva or whether you followed my tutorials and you've created one inside of the Over app, whatever you do, um, you're gonna create that logo in a small square. So you're gonna need that. And then what you wanna do is open up the site dashboard. So you are actually, uh, if you've been following along in the course in here, you'll probably notice that I am going through and actually creating a custom site here for a client. So I'm just, as I'm walking them through this process, I'm bringing you along with me. So in order to get to your site dashboard, now keep in mind, you have a site overview, okay? So this is the site overview tab. Um, you can get to the dashboard a couple of different ways. My favorite way to get to the dashboard is just to select the site, like open it up, and then from the settings, go all the way down to my dashboard, and that will pull up your dashboard. Now, from the dashboard main menu here, it's a little confusing because it says dashboard right here. It's like dashboard, dashboard. Um, from the side menu here, click on the settings and then overview and or general info, I think. Hold on one second. Yep, okay, so it's underneath of the general info. So you're gonna go to dashboard, settings, and then general info and that is going to pull up this page right here where you're going to edit and update all of the information regarding your website so if you have an email address you can put that in here um, if you want to purchase a mailbox for your domain you can go ahead and do that right through Wix. You will be then given a G Suite mailbox. I think I showed you in another tutorial how to set that up. It's really simple. So a lot of the common mailbox ones are like info or support or um, so for this one, they could do like synergy at synergyvirtualwellness.com. Or if you are an employee and, you know, you have a first name and you want to be at the domain, you could do like Dr. Lauren at synergyvirtualwellness.com or Dr. Tiffany at synergyvirtualwellness.com. So whatever you want to do, you're going to list the main contact email for your business up there. The next thing you're going to go in and do is put your business or website name here. If you have an LLC, this is where you will put that. Um, if you're incorporated, now keep in mind, you don't wanna put your business name and the tagline all in one spot. You just want it to be your business name. If your website or your business is named after you, you're following my guidelines to creating a personal brand, you will just simply put your name right here. So you could just be like, so for example, mine is just Sarah Michaels. Uh, then this is the place where you're gonna put a very short 150 character or less description. This is the perfect place to add in your personal or your business vision or mission statement. That's where you're gonna to wanna to do that. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and select the categories for your business. So you can scroll down through here and pick the one that works best for you. So for example, they are health and wellness. And then from health and wellness, there's a couple more drop down categories. So for example, we're gonna go ahead and pick wellness because that's, um, just a little bit more of what their niche is other than health. Okay, so then you're going to just upload the logo that you have. If you followed my guidelines and you created a square logo in either Canva or in the Over app and uploaded that to your Wix, um, you should be able to pull that up here. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is upload the favicon or favicon, I don't know how to say it. I'm, we're just gonna call it a favicon. <laughs> so as you can see, uh, if you're wondering what a favicon is, it's that small little thing up here on the top of these tabs 
these are all favicons. So I like to create one that's a little bit, that's a looks a little bit different. Um, I went ahead and did the black one because the black shows up really well. And then you've got this blue, which says synergy. So it makes it pop just a little bit better. Um, once you've uploaded the favicon, you'll be able to see a preview of your favicon right here. And that's what will show up anytime on a browser when someone has clicked on your site. The next thing you can add from here is you can add in your payment methods. You can also um, access that from the accept payments line right here. So if you see on the dashboard on this left-hand side of the menu, you can also add in your payments from this button right here. So we already went through and did this. Their payments are turned on. Now keep in mind, if you turn the payments on, I believe you have about 30 days to complete the setup in order to actually collect your money. So I think you can go live. And keep in mind, these are just simply if you have a store or services or bookings that you're accept, accepting payments for through your own payment gateway on your website. This is not the case if you are linking to an affiliate link or a product on someone else's page, this does not apply because obviously you will be getting paid from that person, you know, that separate platform. Okay, so shipping regions, um, this is where you would add them if you are selling physical products. Um, if you have a physical location, even if you are virtual, but you're located out of a certain area, you want to make sure that you have selected a physical address. Now, the reason for that is because then on the Google, um, when, when people are searching for you locally on Google, you're going to rank higher. So even, so for example, even for my agency, which is the Loft 30A, um, even though we are a virtual location, um, when we were down there, I still selected Destin, Florida, USA, because that's where the company and the majority of the people that we're targeting are out of for the Loft 30A. Even though eventually we're going to have multiple locations, multiple offices, you want to pick the one location that would be your main location. If you are an influencer, a blogger, and you're not serving anyone locally, just go ahead and turn that off because you don't need a physical address or location. But if you are serving local clients, go ahead and select that. And then you will, um, if you don't have a physical location, but you're just operating out of a certain city, you will want to go ahead and type that in. Um, my recommendation, if you are in a very small town, but you're within range, I would pick the next largest city closest to you and set that as your address. Okay, because you don't you don't want to be popping up as like some rinky dink, you know, in some rinky dink little town, you want to be able to pop up for the people who are within like an hour range of you. So that that's just a personal preference recommendation. Take that how you will. If you do have a physical address, like an actual brick and mortar location, obviously you would want to type that in here so that you would appear on the local search listings for Google. Um, and then if there's anything special that people have to know about your address, for example, if you're sharing uh, a location with someone, this is where you would go ahead and write the location description in here. So as you can see, i.e. located on the second floor or located, you know, whatever that description would be. Uh, so then you're going to go down to the regional settings, select your location. So for them, they are located, uh, it's English, the United States, the language is English. You can set up the currency here. And then you may want to make sure that you have set selected the correct time zone. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do here, so this is how that is viewed. This is the format. Um, if you want to grow a global audience, you can enable a multilingual website. So for example, I have a multilingual, multilingual, blah, 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 <laughs> multilingual website 
for my team page. So I have a website. So as you guys know, um, I have alternate income streams. One of those happens to be a business and a company that I've partnered with that has locations all over the world. We are building a global um, team. And so I had to make sure that I enabled a multilingual website for that specific one. Now, if the majority of your clients are going to be coming from a certain country and you're not going to be able to serve French clients because you speak English, this will not be relevant to you. Okay, so just keep that in mind. This is only relevant if you are going to have a global education, you're having people visit from all over the world, or maybe you're a blogger and you want to be able to have people come and check your site out, even if they're anywhere. So that is where this multilingual option would come into play. Okay, so, ooh, whoopsies. We've just landed back in the app market. <laughs> so let's go back to the dashboard, go to settings, go to general info. Um, so there you have it. That's how once we're done, we're going to go ahead and make sure it's saved. And then everything looks like it's saved and you're ready to rock. You have just updated all of the general information for your website and you are one step closer to officially launching. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions on this section, uh, if you haven't already, by the way, make sure that you are signed up for the actual Style It Yourself course because that's the only way that you're going to get access to the weekly Q&A sessions. And remember, as always, if you have any questions, make sure you're a Style It Yourself member or a What The Tech member and you get access to those sessions every single week where we can take a look at your site before you go live or if you have questions, we can check that out and help you. So thank you so much for watching. I will put the links to both of those that I mentioned mentioned style it yourself and what the tech down below um, as well as a trial link to each so thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful if it was and you're watching this on youtube be sure to give it a thumbs up and remember to click subscribe so that you don't miss a new video when it drops i'll see you in the next video